Really, I would like to thank Institute for Defense and Analysis for uh, the kind invitation extended to me, giving me the privilege to address this subject. Uh, and uh, to very honorable and distinguished audience, and to speak about ISIS in my native country, Iraq. And uh, my thanks also to the ambassador of India and Baghdad. Uh, actually, on uh, July the 9th, Iraq victory over the Islamic State in Iraq, ISIS or Daesh, after fighting for nine months to retake Mosul, the second largest city in Iraq. After capturing the city, ISIS fighting force increased dramatically to about 30,000 by the start of 2016, and it was really, really bad day to every Iraqi. The result of that was the loss of highly sophisticated Iraqi technology and weaponry to ISIS. And in addition, close to nine Sunni million Arabs in the area came under ISIS control and were forced to follow its rules. And I said forced, forced to follow its rules of behavior, in spite no one of the population were supporter to ISIS, in spite that sometimes we read or we hear in conferences some rumor about something else about Mosul and Salahuddin and Ambar. The success in Mosul afforded ISIS the ability to occupy more cities in the region and the part of Iraq since the bad June 2014. In fact, ISIS victory gave its control over about one third of Iraq territory within a couple of weeks, and even Kurdistan was under uh, a severe uh, threat of being occupied by ISIS. And Dehok, which is also a major city in Kurdistan, and the whole Kurdish re region. Always in my speech, talking about the tragedy of people in Mosul and other major cities in central, western, and northwestern of Iraq since 2014, the tragedy <laughs> and the crimes against Yazidi and what happened on those areas. Government uh, calls on civilians to remain in their houses during the fighting resulted in high death, bombardment of ISIS targets, the number of people executed by ISIS uh, amounted to hundreds just in the uh, recent battle to retake western of Mosul. You cannot imagine how much civilian we lost. What is worse for civilians and security uh, personnel alike is that the city appears to be trapped by ISIS fighters uh, with the aim of inf uh, inflicting as much damage as in, in those cities. And also there is wrong uh, coalition forces bombing in the area. Major destruction of the infrastructure of those cities and the beautiful historical uh, area. The challenges after uh, declaring the victory over ISIS by the Iraqis and the help of the international community is the Iraqi government and the international coalition led by the United States. Their aim is to ensure the integrity of Iraq, uh, sovereignty of Iraq, and intercommunal uh, reconciliation in Iraq. But what is required is a political, a political process that guarantees equality, justice, and the human rights. And that is based on liberal secular principle, principles. Article 7 of the Iraqi Constitution 
prohibits establishing or associating with organization that justified racism or terrorism or anything like this. Uh, the Iraqi government and parliament need to address the shortcoming and drawback of the current political process and the constitution, both were reasons for current instability and inequality in the country. So that we, we, we are actually in a conflict. Uh, and there is safe measures in Iraq. The safe measures we can take it now is by addressing the real problems of Iraqi societies after eradication of ISIS. I mean, without addressing those, we wouldn't be able to move forward. Number one is uh, sectarianism among some of the political groups now governing Iraq political process. And number two is the regional interference across the borders of Iraq neighborhood in different aspects. Uh, the interference are political, military, religious, and economic interest. Also, the United States of America conflict with Iran uh, about the nuclear agreement and the Turkish Kurdish conflict about the PKK, the conflict in Syria and the whole region, and the mass destruction in Syria done by ISIS and many military forces inside. Iraq and the Arabic country, after 15 years, are not strong. Are are in not in not in strong relation, especially with Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. In spite of the Saudi Arabia efforts in the last 12 months to assess Iraq in this critical transitional time. This uh, support should be uh, deliver services, I mean the whole support, not one country support, to middle and south of Iraq to stop their suffering from shortage of services and distracted, distracted infrastructures, and to help in reconstruction of Ambar Mosul humanitarian aids. Uh, the, uh, the last, uh, the third thing is the, the election in Iraq now, it's just on last April, and the fraud happened in this election, uh, and the lowest voter percentage. Uh, it's affecting really forming the government now. Iraq is not focused on Iran now during this election. They know that something wrong with their country. Also, the U.S.-Iraq relationship need to be reassessed and uh, Washington and the Arab allies to Iraq should also provide more assistance on financial anti-corruption efforts, training and protection program for judges as well as counterintelligence and counterterrorism support against ISIS. I mean, this is the fact. We should accept it. And about, I want to talk something about in modern Iraq, the most important factors to ensure stability are a mutual acceptance, coexistence, and justice. All these will lead to a cohesive society no matter how multi-ethnic, uh, multilingual, and multi-sex uh, in this society. Such was the case in the past. They can experience the same in the future, provided that no foreign meddling for Iraq is already a diverse society with the four major ethnic groups and two major religions. Iran is diverse with at least 10 different ethnic communities, about 2 million out of 35 million population, doctors, engineers, teachers, attorneys and we have one and a half million are uh, university students. Uh, now the situation are children out of the schools and thousands of unemployed young men and women 
wide and strong anti-corruption strategy we need for the country. There is many things to do. There is, I want to say something here about United Nations Security Council resolution. There is resolution 2367 at 2017 on the 14th of July. Uh, it aimed to extend the mandate of UN in Iraq, but it's also focused on concern about the destruction of Mosul, the humanitarian crisis the, uh, there, the role of armed mili militia, uh, militia in Iraq, and the Iraqi government's need to act in a more balanced way to address the problems of civilians in Iraq, including Mosul. Focusing uh, that all parts, parties should take all steps to ensure the protection of affected civilians, including children. And I don't know how much you hear now what's happening in Basra. Women and members of uh, religious and ethnic minorities groups and should create conditions conductive to the voluntary, safe, dignified, and sustainable return of the, ref of the refugees and internally displaced persons uh, or local integration of internally displaced persons, particularly in area newly liberated from, uh, from Daesh. I mean, there is return to their area, but not in a dignified life. The government failed to support their return. And also I focus on implementation of Resolution 1325, Security Council, uh, encouraging the, the government of Iraq to put its efforts to promote and protect the rights of women uh, and other resolution following it. Now, we talk about forming the government now. I just came yesterday, and I was under many meetings with political groups to form the government. But I think it's a big conflict, and there's a big pressure from the USA and Iran inside among all the political, all the politician. And uh, Dr. Ahmed, tell me, you said something about which is related to what I'm saying now about the player. The inside player, the domestic player in, in Iraq can be a key maker once it is not involved with uh, military forces and corruption. As long as those player, whether inside or outside player, they cannot play <coughs> big role uh, in making and creating stability in the country as long as there is high corruption among them and armed people. Iraq after ISIS and the whole region where I came from, it wouldn't be same like Iraq before ISIS. And all the actors inside Iraq who are conflicted between each other, as I mentioned, they will be loser, loser. I'm saying that and, and I'm sure of what I'm, what I'm saying. Except the coalition forces who have headed by the USA because they choose the sky and we choose the ground to fight. Uh, also, we should continue the challenges. And I'm talking about we are one nation of Arab, Turk, Kurd, and I Iranian. We are one nation in the area. And without focusing on that, we will, and, and facing our challenges as one nation in one area, I think the threat will be very high of more fragmentation and to start with Iraq, and that means fragmentation more to Iraq, fragmentation to the whole area in 10 to 15 years. And thank you very much for listening to me. And I just, uh, 
and on my background, I am a consultant doctor. I wish all my life to visit India where I was a student in the medical school, but I couldn't have the chance, and I visited India. I had eight years in, as a member in the Parliament, and I am a head of organization in Iraq since 2005, uh, which ad advocate for uh, vulnerable groups of Iraqis. Thank you very much.